It's time now for Keller at Large. Here's John Keller. Well, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. As the National Democratic Party begins its process of choosing a nominee and sort of defining what it stands for at this point in our history, we thought it was a good time to check in with the local Democratic Party here in Massachusetts with our guest, the party chairman and veteran political activist Gus Bickford, who has served as chairman of the Mass Democratic Party since 2016. Gus, welcome. Thank you, John, and thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Now, um, I, first of all, I want to let our viewers know that because of vacation schedules, this segment was taped quite a bit in advance. If we say something that seems a little dated, uh, just uh, pretend it never happened. So uh, I get your press releases nearly weekly, <laughs> and they seem to have a common theme, Gus. Um, for instance, here's a recent one about, quote, Donald Trump's fake national emergency, quote, Republican Charlie Baker still refuses to denounce the president, only summoning enough courage to suggest through a spokesperson that Congress and the president should work together. Governor Baker should show a little backbone and finally condemn his president. And wouldn't it not be nice to see him do so without being pressured, end quote. Pretty much I get one of these a week. Different topic, pretty much the same claim. Didn't Massachusetts voters send a message last fall that they really don't expect Baker to play the role you're describing. I, I so I think that they they respect the Charlie Baker that I respect, which is I think we're very lucky in Massachusetts to have a government that's willing to work together, to have the Senate president and the speaker and the governor meet weekly and realize that the bodies and the branches should work together to move forward. That doesn't mean that we're not at a point in the history of a country where the Constitution is being challenged by this president. Um, we are divided. He continues to use fear and hate to divide the country. And Charlie Baker's better than that. And I think he knows he's better than that. But he also faces new challenges with uh, the new chair of the Republican Party that is a Trump loyalist. And so for him to even step out uh, and challenge the president uh, when he's trying to take away Title IX and Title X um, and that freedoms that I know Baker supports, I don't think you'll find the Republican Party chair doing that. So Charlie Baker is in a really tough place. So I'm going to continue to encourage him uh, to be stronger and call this president out. You know, the former governor, uh, Bill Weld, who's doing just that. Um, and it will make us all better. It's what Massachusetts wants him to do. What about the argument that, you know, we rely on federal funding heavily at this state for a lot of things yeah. and that it's the uh, discretion's the better part of valor here to keep the lines of communication open with, with the Trump administration? Uh, I, I think it's an excellent point. I'm not suggesting that he, he shut down the lines of communication. I think we're also lucky in Massachusetts to have Congressman Richie Neal as, you know, chair of Ways and Means. So we've got in this new cycle, we have a little bit better avenue as to push where uh, the financial resources come from. But when it comes to the type of presidency that, you know, Donald Trump is pushing forward, Charlie Baker can have a bigger voice. And especially with this emergency, it's not an emergency. So just say it. Now that you've had a few months to digest it. What's the moral of the story? What was the message uh, that voters sent the Democratic Party and the rest of us last November here? I mean, you saw certainly, you know, Ayanna Presley ousting a longtime incumbent. You saw a couple of longtime Beacon Hill incumbents ousted by primary challengers from their left. Right. On this, but then in November, you had Charlie Baker racking up a near record margin. What, it, what do you take away from it, Gus? Uh, I mean, with Charlie Baker, it was because he stood against Trump that he was so popular and so tough for us to actually uh, make a dent. On the Democratic side, again, similar message, which is we need to change in Washington. And what ended up happening was we continued to push forward that new leadership, new faces, uh, younger generation. Uh, I think that, you know, that's what this, the the in, in, a, in a local level, that's what they spoke against. I also think in the state house, that's what we saw. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that. Great segue, because when we come back from our break, let's talk a little bit about what's up with Democrats on Beacon Hills. We continue our conversation with the chair of the Mass Democratic Party in a moment. Stay.